Well, the feedback from the first video was overwhelmingly positive, so here we are again. Before we start the video, I want to point out a few changes I've made to my instance. I replaced A2 with PA2, as well as replacing extended crafting with Tsunami Factory Fork. In addition, I also disabled A2 channels. There have been suggestions to add A2 fluid crafting to the pack, which I may host a vote on the community tab on if it should be added. With that out of the way, let's see what I've been up to. So, with this little speedrun being turned into a fully fledged playthrough, I needed to make a couple additions to the base so I could press on easier. Thankfully, I've already more or less planned ahead with things like the coke oven and plate presser already being a part of the base. I automated the plate presser so I could process ores easier. To handle this new influx of ores that needed to be smelted, I also set up a tinkerer's furnace, which is a fairly underrated multi-block that allows you to smelt a ton of ores at once. In addition, I also made a storage scanner to help make storage management easier. And finally, I went on a mining trip to resupply the base with resources. In order to craft A2 stuff, I needed to have all the presses, so I went exploring. Along the way, I found dragons, as well as two pyramids with messed up generation. I eventually found two meteors, and thus obtained all the presses needed. To get A2 set up, I needed to craft various casings, and to craft those casings, I needed various machines. For the most part, mechanism machines were used, being both cheap and effective at the same time, with a notable exception being the IC2 extractor. IC2 uses EU rather than RF, which would normally require setting up another power system to generate EU. Alternatively, Mechanism's universal cables can be used to convert RF to EU. However, universal cables require some extra steps that I wasn't willing to enter that rabbit hole just to power a single machine. So, instead, I just crafted a Mechanism power cube and used that to power the machine instead. Also, a special note goes to the Forestry Carpenter, which I need to craft impregnated sticks. Normally, you would need to extract olives in a squeezer to get the olive oil needed for the sticks, but I instead used a crushing tub to do so manually. I also gathered rubber trees and cacti, which were needed for various parts in A2. Now with all the machines and parts ready, I set up A2 and moved everything over to it. I then set up auto-crafting and set up recipes to auto-craft interfaces and patterns. Following that, I automated the infuser to have circuits on auto-craft. After all this crafting, I was fairly low on resources, so I crafted an actually additions crusher to help mitigate that. Now, as for the second part of this video's title, Detonation. Combat Dynamite is an extremely underrated tool in E2E. Combat Dynamite is extremely cheap to craft and can deal 250 damage on a direct hit. And on top of that, it still deals a ton of splash damage. After crafting some dynamite, I head off to one of the dragon nests I found while exploring, and promptly one-shot the dragon. In the dragon's nest, I find various bits of loot, including various bits of nuclear craft materials, potions, platinum, and most importantly, IC2 plutonium, which will come in handy later. I promptly die as a result of picking up the plutonium. 